then we will take up a case study question on um, corporate failure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> RM Batteries, RM Batteries Company is a manufacturer of battery packs. It has expanded rapidly in the last few years under the leadership of its autocratic chairman and chief executive officer, John Smith. Smith is relentlessly optimistic. He likes to get his own way and demands absolute loyalty from all his colleagues. The company has developed a major new product over the last three years, which has necessitated a large investment in new equipment. Smith has stated that this more efficient battery is critical to the future of the business as the company operates in a sector <clears throat> where customers expect constant innovation from their suppliers. However, the recent share price performance has caused concern at board level and there has been comment in the financial press about the increased gearing and the strain that this expansion is putting on the company. The average share price has been 1.56 in 2008, 1.67 in 2009, 1.342 in 2010. There are 450 million shares in issue. A relevant Z score model for the industry sector is, <clears throat> I have explained to you, the, there is a formula which is um, framed <clears throat> by Altman and the score that is calculated um, if, I mean, the, uh, the value, if it lies above 3 or between uh, 1.81 and 3 or below 1.81. So based on that, the conclusions were given as to whether the organization is heading towards insolvency or there can be something done about the organization or it is financially sound so that part of it can be commented upon that then the variables in uh, the z formula x1 to x5 all of The variables x1 to x5, what's the definition of each of them is also given. Otherwise, also we have studied yesterday about what does x1 represent, x2, x3, x4, x5. So after that, <clears throat> the company's recent financial performance is some, uh, of course, this is also given a score of more than three is <coughs> Sorry, a score of more than three is considered safe and at uh, below 1.8. And the company is at risk of failure in the next two years. We have the recent financial performance given for 2008, 9 and 10. Revenue, operating cost, profit, interest, profit before tax, tax and then profit for the period. Apart from that, we also have the balance sheet. The statements of financial positions are given. We have the total assets and the total equity plus the liabilities are given. Below that, it says required um, a bit. Discuss the strength and weakness of uh, weaknesses of quantitative and qualitative models for predicting corporate failure. Then we see calculate the following for each of the three years given the market capitalization, the Z score and the gearing level. Uh, that is debt, debt by equity. Then uh, uh, CBIT says that comment on your figures calculated in part B. Identify. Uh, so this is basically, uh, this question is about how to measure uh, corporate failure by way of using Altman's Z score. Okay. It's a simple uh, question only focusing around corporate failure. It is not a combination of two, three topics included here. So let's take this one to the Excel file and then um, put the answers there. 
Okay, so first one, the first question which is asked is describe, uh, discuss the strength and weaknesses of quantitative and qualitative models for predicting uh, corporate failure. So what are these things? So <clears throat> this is a general answer. We have to talk about what are the strengths. And weaknesses See, any quantitative model what is the advantage of that it's just not about um, uh, corporate failure but otherwise in general what advantage do we have if we are considering a quantitative model Please participate. Please participate in the discussion. Forget about the corporate failure only. Uh, see what, what advantage do we have if we depend on a quantitative model? What do you think? Quantitative is in terms of figures. So we use the figures to talk about, um, measure the performance of that or anything about that is uh, expressed in terms of numbers. Okay, strengths and weaknesses of quantitative and qualitative model of predicting corporate failure. So if that is the case, if we uh, first talk about quantitative. See, important aspect <clears throat> what we talk about is, it's easy to use figures strength if we can talk about it easy to use available figures that's applicable in every situation See, whenever it is quantitative the data is available you just have to apply that and then um, get the conclusions then get the answer uh, derive the value and then based on that give your comments so it is easy to use the available figures 
and analyze the position see here also when the um, when the um, data is taken from the financial records and then it is applied see specifically here about corporate uh, failure the answer is in simple terms that is if z if uh, i mean if we are using altman uh, altman z score model if z score is there are three situations one is it is greater than 3 indicates the firm is doing good need not worry about that but let's say if it happens to be between 1.81 is greater than is less than z z lies between 1.81 and z is less than 3 so in this case what does this indicate so restructuring can be taken up some way it, it can be reorganized rearranged everything and then uh, um <clears throat> it can be uh, restored the position can be restored if um, z is less than 1.81 in that case corporate is heading towards failure so this is what is the advantage it is as simple as that it is all based on a particular value which is derived by using the quantitative data and the interpretation is very easy but then if we are talking about the um, <clears throat> weakness about that see figures uh, figures do not always convey the real picture so the dependence on uh, quantitative data see if we are focusing on quantitative data other non financial aspects can be ignored see there the it is not that we can always um, only focus on the financial state uh, statements but there are other factors also which talk about a particular um, i mean the performance of a particular company um <clears throat> solely depending on a calculated value and then commenting may not be appropriate then we also know that financial statements there is a possibility to manipulate the financial statements that's another important point we can uh, also consider so financial statements financial data may not be always reliable because the manipulation is possible with that therefore can we trust that completely that is a question there now if we are talking about qualitative qualitative data anything which is um, other than non accounting data so if we are depending on that so what's the strength strength of that strength of using qualitative data so if that is the case what what what's the strength the reasons for failure or the problems can be identified that becomes possible because it is not going with any value and then finally commenting that it is doing good or it is not doing good but rather because the other factors are taken into consideration what is the main reason why there is a, um, a situation of a corporate failure those things the, that is when we have looked into yesterday adjunctive model so it, it was i uh, it was uh, focusing on 
See the adjunctive model, which is a qualitative model. It focuses on what are the defects, what are the mistakes, and what are the symptoms of failure. So these things highlight about what's going on with the organization. So that is that is the strength of it. So if that is known, measures can be taken to rectify the situation. What can be a weakness? Of course, don't write like this, but write in detail. I, I mean, the time uh, takes a lot because there's a lot of time which takes for me to type. I'm just explaining. You have to clearly explain. Okay. What could be a weakness? See, it is not objective, it is subjective. See, when we are focusing on the non-financial factors, it has to be understood. Uh, prone to investigators' bias. It is subjective. And the Quantitative measurement <clears throat> can have um, an influence on the investigator. Because already the uh, quantitative model talks about what is the value. So there is every possibility that the investor, investigator or somebody who is looking into the reasons why there is a failure also can get carried away by whatever is um, the value given by the quantitative model. They may not uh, focus more on what is actually happening and um, suggest um, any measures for rectification that may not be there. Uh, they may not identify the true reasons, et cetera. Or if there is any other thing possible that maybe it is actually not heading towards failure, so um, the financial data was not reliable or something like that, those things, if they are not identified, then again, this becomes a weakness. So basically, it is subjective in nature. It is not that um, very simply it can be calculated. So on that note, we see that becomes a weakness of... Um, <clears throat> quantitative model. The second question, calculate the following for each of the three years. We have the data for three years, eight, nine, 10, I guess. Ah, eight, nine, and 10. So for each of the three years, we are asked to calculate what is market capitalization, the Z score, and the gearing level. Let's take it up. <clears throat> <clears throat> calculation of market capitalization z score and debt by equity for three years so what are those three years eight let's uh, write it as 2008, 2009, and 2010. Done? What's market capitalization? So what's the value of the firm according to the performance in the market? So um, there is the, some data which is provided to us here. The average share price has been 1.56, 1.67, 1.34 in those three years. And in all the three years, there are 450 million shares. So if you are to calculate market capitalization, first we talk about what's the share price.
So the average share price is given as 1.56, 1.67. And then we have it as 1.34. Then uh, number of shares. See, on all the three years, it's 450 million. <clears throat> Then we have market capitalization. Okay. After that, after market capitalization, we are asked to calculate Z score. Okay, so Z score has to be calculated. So what's the formula for Z score? There is a formula given, it's written here. We can look into this one. So for the calculation of Z-score, we need to first calculate X1, X2, X3. one4 X2. Then plus 3.3. There's a lot of importance given to X3 because of the coefficient plus 0.6 X4. Then we have plus 1x5. So that's the formula. So if this is the formula, we need to first calculate what is x1. Then we need to calculate what is x2, x3. So that all these variables, if they are there, then it, it, is, it becomes easy for us to substitute in that. But then what is x1? x1 is, we have it as working capital divided by total assets. Do we have the total assets given in the financial statement? We do have the total assets. Total assets are uh, 1,355, 2,063 and 2,456. Now what's working capital? Working capital is, what is working capital? What is working capital? Anyone there in the class to answer me? <clears throat> Working capital is? The formula for working capital is current assets minus current liability. Does it that does anything sound uh, familiar? So I'm just writing here because the figures are here. Working capital is current assets. Current assets for this year is 235. Current liabilities is 456. Do you see that on the um, screen? We have current assets as 256. Current liabilities as uh, 4 uh, 2. 235 and 456. So, is equal to 235 minus 456. So, that will become uh, working capital. Divided by, we should have what are the total assets, which is 1355. So, that is minus 0 0.1631. Next, also in a similar fashion, we have 285 minus 498 divided by 2063. The next one we have 341 minus 555 divided by 2456. So did you understand the calculation? So that's X1. So now what, what is X2? So let's check what is X2. X2 is equal to 
it is about retained earnings retained earnings divided by total assets <clears throat> so what are retained earnings in the uh, statement of financial position so let's just check that um retained earnings and reserves are given and we have the total assets so let's quickly do that um, is equal to retained earnings are 204 divided by 1355 then we have 344 divided by 2063 then we have 410 divided by 2456 so the variable x2 also is calculated what is x3 <clears throat> x3 is pbit or evit what we call it as pbit evit it means the same um divided by the total assets okay so So what is um, EBIT? Where is it? Sorry. What is EBIT? The profit before interest and tax. So, operating profit is profit before interest and tax, which is three zero seven two eighty one one ninety one. So, three zero seven. Then we have two eighty one. then we have 191 so this will be the third variable x3 after this x4 so what is x4 x4 talks about it's given here x4 is the market value of equity divided by the total long term debt so market value of equity divided by total long term debt what's the market value of equity market value of equity we already know what is the market value of equity which is 702 751 and 603 but what's the total debt So the total debt amounts are <clears throat> the total long term debts are four sixty five nine ninety one one two six one. So four sixty five nine ninety one and one two six one. So I am just taking these figures up, and then we will work out the. Is equal to market value of equity is seven zero two divided by four sixty five. Here we have it as seven fifty one point five divided by nine ninety one. Then we have it as six zero three divided by one two six one. X five, so X five is it's the revenue divided by total assets. So revenue we can see here one four six zero one five six zero one nine one five. Okay, so.
okay now that all five variables x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 are calculated now it becomes possible for us to calculate what is z score is equal to the first variable um, has 1.2 as coefficient 1.2 into this plus the second variable has a coefficient of 1.4 1.4 into you have to memorize this in situations where they do not um, provide the uh, equation you should remember that and then reproduce that the second variable has 3.3 into x3 plus the fourth variable has 0.6 into x4 plus we have 1 into 1 into or just like that also we just present that also it's fine perfectly fine so that is the value we have it as z score for the year 2008 9 and then 10 So we've done the Z score calculation. <clears throat> now we have to comment about that. So you, um, no, no, one more thing is also asked. No, we are asked to calculate what is the debt equity ratio. Isn't it? Three things have to be done: market capitalization, Z, Z score, and debt equity. debt equity ratio so how do we calculate what is debt equity ratio debt by equity so how much is debt if you look into that we have the debt values given we also have the equity values given so equity value is the share capital plus the long term um, uh, sorry, sorry share capital plus retained earnings is uh, equity. Then we have long term borrowing. So, uh, considering this, this calculation, uh, we have to show what is the debt equity ratio. I'm putting it here. I'll drag it up. Debt is 456 divided by equity is two items, 230 plus 204. Reserves, um, share capital as well as reserves. Both of them are part of equity. Then we have 991 divided by 230 plus 344. Then we have 1261 divided by 230 plus 410. Either we put this as this value or we can also convert this as what percentage of um, that we also we can present it um, either ways uh, whichever way we feel comfortable we can uh, present it Is this calculation clear? <clears throat> so 
uh, how many marks is this calculation? Generally, we have observed that wherever calculations are given, we don't see a lot of marks being allotted to that. See, this has only five marks. But another five marks is added when we comment about the figures, figures that are calculated in part B. If we, if we do that, then another five marks would be uh, awarded. So what do we see? What do we understand from that? See, the calculations uh, are based on, CZ score is based on these three values. If it is above three, it's doing good. It's financially sound. If it is less than 1.81, it is a danger. That is, it's almost on the verge of uh, insolvency, bankruptcy, and it would file for insolvency. If the value lies between 1.81 and 3, maybe some measures can be taken so that things can be rectified. What are the values here for Z score? 2.75, the first year, it is okay, it is doing good, 2.75. It's not very uh, safe and sound with a value about three, per, uh, three, but it is not that bad also. It is somewhere close to three, only 2.75. Then the next year it fell down to 1.77 and after that it further fell down to 1.45. So when we look at the performance of the this particular RM batteries, we understand that it is, the performance is deteriorating and it is very bad. Now it is, see 1.77 is also below 1.81. That itself is an indication that it's not doing well. And if the Z score um, falls even below that, which is which has reached to 1.45, it indicates that the performance of the company is not at all doing good or it is not safe. Coming to market value, market capitalization. The see the market capitalization. The first year it is only it is seven zero two. From seven zero two, then we see that there is a sudden increase in the um, market uh, value of equity from seven zero two to seven fifty one, and then from seven fifty one it fell down to six zero three. So the market uh, capitalization, so the value of equity capital in the market is not heading in the same direction like we see the Z score. So initially the position or the performance of the uh, equity capital in the stock market seems to be really good from 702, it rose up to 751. After that, it fell down to 603. Then what is the reason for that? What actually happened that in spite of the um, market value of equity doing good in the initial years, still we do not see that being reflected in the Z score. Z score consistently and very badly, it fell down to 1.45 from 2.75. So what actually happened when this has increased, this should also have been become better. But what was the reason? Now we can see that they have borrowed more amount of debt. See, debt carrying ratio, if it is high, it is an indication. Then you know, that, that talks about symptoms of failure. One of them is um, sorry, mistakes. One of them, uh, one of them is having high gearing, that is borrowing lot of debt capital is not um, a good sign. So that is indicating that they are short of funds, they are not able to make the payments or whatever is that their requirement for capital has increased. When the risk increases, see here, um, from 107% to um, the debt portion has increased to 173%. Debt was 173% of equity capital. Ideally speaking, it should be equal amount. So that is what actually happened. Then when we look at the operating um, position, the operating position, revenue is consistently being growing, being growing over the, these three years period of time, 1460 to 1560 to 1915. 
it has increased but profit has not increased in the same manner where we see that there is a decrease in profit 185 to 141 to 65 the revenue if it has increased profit also should increase which means that there was inefficiency in terms of cutting down on the cost when the revenues increase the operating cost also increased but i think the increase was from 14560 um, it has increased to 1915 operating cost also uh, should increase in the same proportion that was not the situation the proportionate increase in operating cost was more than um, the increase in sales therefore the operating cost there was an impact the operate oh, sorry the operating profit there was an impact operating profit was falling down from 307 to 281 to 191 when revenues increase profit also should increase but that did not happen that did not happen is first reason okay so we can talk about um, comment so what did we uh, first understand first point initially the market capitalization it increased it increased from so we can talk about what the what are the calculated values um and what what are what is the reason can be uh, commented upon so what is the reason the this was because of because of increase in <clears throat> technically they have done uh, they have done uh, well see initially they have um, uh, i mean the the operating performance of the company was very good so they were doing well but um therefore the market capitalization also when there are more sales when there is more activity there is uh, see that will definitely get reflected on the market capitalization the performance of the um, the share capital but in the next year the value fell down to what was it 60 some 603 why why did this happen this can be attributed to because the profits were not increasing in proportion to the um, increase in sales so that's what we can comment upon uh, on what what actually happened okay that that's one point then um the interest cost also have increased due to 
borrowing of debt capital on requirement so wherever there was a requirement they were going on borrowing debt capital so debt proportion has increased from 107% to 173 to 197 which is a mistake they should not go for raising more amount of debt because of more amount of debt we see that the interest capital was increasing drastically so it's almost increased to three times initially it was 35 so it has almost close to three times it has increased because they have doubled their um, debt capital as much as 107% was there it has uh, increased up to 197 which is a mistake that should not have that should not have happened okay so um, then then what else ha uh, actually happened their working capital was negative in all the three years they did not have current asset as much as their current liabilities the current liabilities if it was 456 their current asset was only 235 so um, working capital position is very bad it's just not bad it is very bad they do not even have sufficient amount of current assets to repay their current liabilities so that is one a uh, a uh, uh, weak financial indicator as when when they understand that they do not have sufficient amount of current assets then they have to understand that their um, reputation in the business in the short term period is getting affected because they are unable to make the payment to their creditors so if their rep reputation gets affected if the liquidity position is bad the stakeholders would not want to continue to have a relationship with the business that is another serious issue which has to be looked into okay after that the um, working capital position is very bad the retained earnings versus the um, total assets okay so they have retained some amount of uh, retained earnings reserves are we see that the retained earnings are uh, uh, 204 344 and 410 see when the profits were not increasing yet they went on to retain the uh, profits which means that dividends were not uh, sufficient enough which were paid to the equity holders therefore all the profits that are available were retained when they were retained um in that case we see that um the shareholders dissatisfaction would be seen see initially it was only 204 now 204 um and 344 the difference is 140 so the next year the profit earned is 141 so they have retained 140 it indicates that nothing was paid to the uh, equity shareholders as dividend then that will cause dissatisfaction among the shareholders which is also a mistake then next year is 65 that 65 when it is added to 344 it is 410 so now 409 that is also that is the same thing continued here so equity shareholders were not paid dividend causing shareholders dissatisfaction okay so we see that these um, points um, then <coughs> X three is also not doing good. See, um, great importance is given to X three because the coefficient is three point three. So the profitability position should be good. When the profitability position is good, if they are doing very well in terms of the profit, 
the profit that is available before uh, interest and tax so if that is doing good then we can comment on that that um, yes the position of the uh, company is good but that itself is not good see the P ppit is 307 281 and 191 so pbit has decreased over the years due to no control on operating cost so they have to be controlled but operating cost or op, um, they were not properly controlled that had an impact on their profitability when the profitability gets affected the z score also gets drastically affected because 3.3 into the profitability position then we have um, the market value to um, total debt the market value in comparison to what debt they have it is decreasing because they went on borrowing um, debt capital so more amount of debt capital has resulted in a reduced x4 variable which is market value by total long term debt finally we see that in spite of the revenue uh, in spite of the revenue being uh, generated we do not see the value expire increasing the revenue in all the years has increased 1460 to 1560 to 1915 so proportionately now when we look into the total assets the total assets also have increased so as much as the increase in total assets the increase in sales is not proportionate so <clears throat> increase in revenue is not proportionate to increase in total assets so if we comment about the financial position we would score another 5 marks i hope i am clear altogether basically in this calculation with the comments we have it for 10 marks first uh, a theoretical answer about what are the strengths and weaknesses of these two models quantitative model qualitative model then we take up the calculation calculation part of it, it is simple we just use the financial data present the calculation then uh the second part of it we have to comment upon that okay david says that identify the qualitative problems that are apparent in the company structure and performance and explain why they are relevant to possible failures so what are the qualitative problems so let's look into are there any qualitative problems so um when we talk about the qualitative problems when we talk about qualitative problems the qualitative problems um, which are explained by of course we we have only this model given um, for qualitative um, <clears throat> for qualitative model of corporate failure see there are three things which have to be identified one is defects one is mistakes and one is symptoms of failure so in this case this uh, defects mistakes and symptoms of failure um can we identify them can we identify them here in case of um, this particular company <clears throat> if we talk about defects what are the defects include management weaknesses and accounting deficiencies so let's first comment about the
quantitative problems uh, qualitative problems sorry qualitative problems and the first thing is defects that is management weakness second uh, accounting deficiencies see the um, the question has only uh, very little content the rest of it is all financial statement and the formula and etc so <clears throat> on that note when we look into that anything about the management the first paragraph says that it has expanded rapidly in the last few years under the leadership of its autocratic chairman and ceo john smith he is relentlessly optimistic he likes to get his own way and demands absolute loyalty from the, all his colleagues so we see that that's one major problem what we can identify what's the problem the problem is that the ceo is um autocratic he doesn't like to listen to anyone and then he's optimistic also on the other hand see he is taking decisions and then he's not taking into account others opinion because um, he is an autocratic chairman autocratic they do not listen to others plus another thing is about he is very optimistic so he was not looking at what are the indication financial indicators were indicating that profit was not good they were there was too much of debt being borrowed etc though there are from the financial statements we can look into that though there are indication that the organization is not doing well but he still continue to go in the same manner and um, borrow a lot of debt capital and um, the consequence we can see that so there is management weakness the first thing is defects <clears throat> autocratic chairman and ceo i'm just writing these um, i mean keywords you have to elaborate on that autocratic chairman and ceo who was optimistic and took decisions and took inappropriate decisions you just have to explain there i'm just writing the keywords um you uh, elaborate in the examination okay so that's that's a defect what we can see are there any accounting def uh, deficiencies so okay see management weaknesses and accounting deficiencies so do you see any kind of an accounting defic deficiency here see technically uh, the, when the financial statements are given we i mean we don't have supporting information to understand that this is accounting deficiency so we we don't comment upon that second one second one is about mistakes mistakes is about high gearing over trading or failure of a big project so there is high gearing so the next one is about mistakes in this we see um, high gearing borrowed huge amounts of of debt so that had an impact that had an impact on every possible thing see debt debt had uh, increased the fixed financial cost interest have increased so there is an impact on the profit second we see that because of debt the market value and the total uh, long term debt that that thing has effect got affected then um, um the impact is there on all types of profit um, because of more amount of debt debt has put them into also a problem because of that 
their current liability is increased because interest has to be paid. Interest when it has to be paid, the liability has increased, but they did not have sufficient amount of current assets. So the short term position also got affected. Okay. So that is a major mistake which was um, which happened with this particular company. Third one, symptoms of failure. There were indicators, bleak financial indicators. Indicators were seen, decrease in profitability in spite of increase in revenue. Then we see that the debt portion was increasing. Okay. So that those points, whatever are there, we have to highlight. That's about symptoms of failure. They, uh, where they um, <clears throat> um, I mean, presenting the financial statement uh, in a way that uh, they could manipulate, that part is not there. As it is, whatever is the picture is seen. So creative accounting is not there. Non-financial science, no other uh, additional information is there. So we see that it is bleak financial indicators. So symptoms of failure. Then uh, bleak financial indicators. Like poor working capital working capital position, high gearing ratio, decrease in profits in spite of increase in, in sales, etc. So, you have to comment upon what are the uh, <clears throat> financial indicators um, which were present there, but they failed to look at that. Okay, so talk about that. That's for five marks. Then we see critically assess the results of your analysis in part C and D alongside details of RMB's recent financial performance. C, we have the quantitative, D, we have the qualitative. So taking both quantitative and qualitative. Um, recent financial performance suggest additional data that should be acquired and how it could be used to assess our, uh, RMB's financial health. So we already have uh, the quantitative uh, data. The comments about the quantitative data is seen. We also have commented about the qualitative details. Is there any other details which is um, which should be acquired additional information so on that note um, what do we uh, comment about is there any other additional information which would be um, if we, uh, which can uh, comment about um, <coughs> the position of the uh, <coughs> com, uh, this particular company. What do you think? <coughs> okay. Only little information is there. From that only, we have to uh, draw all the conclusions. First paragraph talks about it has expanded rapidly, expanded rapidly in the last few years. So, which means that they have, uh, they must have come out with the new projects, new products, etc. So, they have expanded. So, when we, when there is expansion, so some of the products, projects which they have taken up, maybe they were in the initial phases. So if they are in the initial phase, we see that it takes some time for the product to realize profitability. When, when the product is going through the in initial phase, we see that the profits are low. Then as it goes to the growth rate and catches on the 
maturity until then we see the risk is also high uh, yesterday we were looking at the product life cycle part of it is see the risk is definitely high in the initial stages but on uh, but once they reach the maturity point of it the risk comes down which means that they also will be able to generate profits only after point of time so if they have expanded rapidly if they have taken up new projects if they have come out with new product the company has developed a major new product over the last three years so what is the uh, break even point of that we do not know um from when would these new products start earning profits that that part of it is not there uh, what's the investment which went into that is not there it is only that we understand that uh, investment was made for that uh, more amount of debt was raised uh, the revenues were increasing but they could not realize the profits because they may be because of um, huge amount of um, initial level costs which were incurred that is the fixed cost which had to be absorbed etc so those things uh, maybe they were very high in the initial phases so therefore the profit so those are additional details the cost structure of the new product is not known the break even point of the new product is not known that we can comment about whether it is actually doing well or not generally we see that any product after a point of time only it starts um, generating profit until then it is all losses on account of that maybe because of that the profits were not very attractive okay that's one part of it we can uh, comment about maybe it is going through the initial phases the new products the new project is going through the initial phases therefore they might that might have given a loss to them that can be seen in the overall profitability but once it picks up on the um, the profitability then the scenario may uh, change okay so that is what we have to comment about then we also should have see if the profits are decreasing profits so anyway are decreasing that we can uh, see that but if the profits are decreasing why are they decreasing what are the different types of costs which are included in operating cost why are these operating costs increasing we don't have the cost structure of these operating costs which cost is increasing so high that the um, the profits are reducing so that the, those details are also not there okay so we can uh, comment about that here the first one is details about the new product are not provided such as um um initial level cost bp etc second operating cost details also also are not provided to identify which cost has increased to control them okay anything else do you identify anything else <clears throat> that's a four marks uh, answer so even if you um, can um, <clears throat> see the market capitalization initially it increased because they were growing it increased revenue was growing it increased but later on it fell down 
can we attribute the entire thing to the performance of the company it could it could have been that the markets only were not doing good so the market position the stock market position maybe if the markets were not doing well that the share price fell down that also could uh, be a possibility but that information is also not there something like that you identify that and then talk about it is that clear is that clear just wait for 2 minutes i will take the attendance don't leave the class you will only miss the attendance just wait for 2 minutes